So I decided to spare you uh, watching me unbox Daniel Hertz products that arrived last night. So I did all the unboxing, Mike and uh, Lewis helped, and here they are. I'll go through the products that we received and, and uh, with some of the details. We will do a follow-up video with the reviews uh, once the units have been fully broken in, okay? So anyway, let's start over here. This is called the Maria 350. Now the previous version was called the Maria 50. The latest call is called the 350 because the power has increased and presumably they've also done a few things to it as well. So it's rated at 350 watts per channel into 8 ohms and 500, yeah, 500 watts into 4 ohms. So plenty of power for almost any kind of application that you would be using it for. Um, the factory says it has the ability to drive 2 ohms. The total harmonic uh, distortion has reduced from um, two decimal places to three decimal places. It has a fully regulated power supply. It's also um, a switching power supply, so you could buy it in North America and bring it over to Europe uh, uh, if you wanted to, and all you have to do is just change the uh, um, power cord and the fuse, presumably. Uh, let's see. It's also using Class D technology. I'm not generally a huge fan of Class D amps. There are a few exceptions, but generally speaking, I haven't found Class D to be as refined as a good Class AB or Class A amplifier. Uh, I'm very intrigued by this one, so stay tuned. We'll see how it sounds like. The one, one, the unique pro, uh, uh, thing behind the Maria 350 is that. Daniel Hertz is not using a typical Class D module like most everybody else does. They worked very closely with the actual manufacturer of the chip. They have incorporated their own uh, technology software so that the Class D amplifier, uh, so, so this amplifier, for example, can be tuned to your speaker to be optimized for your speaker. So for example, we've got this amplifier over here and that has been tuned to these speakers, and this amplifier has been tuned for the little babies, which I'll show you in a moment. Um, if you were to buy a new one, <coughs> your dealer would, together with you, sit down and tune, your, uh, tune the amplifier to your speaker so that you get the most out of that combination. Um, and then also, updates can be done through uh, the software as well, uh, because the, again, the chip does have their own software. The other thing that's interesting about the Marie amplifier is that it has what's a, a, a technology called C-Wave. Um, Mark Levinson was one of the first people to have access to an SACD recorder from Sony back when SACD was first introduced. And uh, 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 by playing around with that uh, SACD recorder, he was able to uh, discover certain things that the format could do and certain things that the format couldn't do. He certainly fell in love with SACD compared to regular CDs, and that's why he started to work uh, with SACD as a format. Well, one of the things, however, that he always felt um, digital couldn't do was that it didn't sound as natural and as beautiful, as organic as analog. And so for many, many years, uh, he and his design team and his mentors have been working to find a way to um, make digital sound better, sound like, as he calls it, master tape. And he believes he's achieved that with a, a, a technology called C-Wave, which I believe he's patenting. He's waiting for the patent to be approved. And that is incorporated into the amplifier. So these are some of the um, uh, uh, things that are unique to the Daniel Hertz amplifier. Um, let's take a look at the, I guess, at the front. So uh, over here, you've got uh, the on-off switch. You've got the input selector. You've got the volume control. And this little thing here is basically a cap. You unscrew it, and you can plug in your headphone. So very simple. The entire chassis is made of black Perspex, which at first glance, I really, really like it. I love how elegant it looks. I love how it, it, it reminds me of a Patek Philippe. Um, uh, I'm not even sure why. Perhaps it's the font, although I don't think Patek Philippe uses this font, but it just evokes that kind of class. And uh, even the way that the knobs are turned and milled and finished, it's just very classy. Um, so I really like what it looks like. It's simultaneously elegant, 
sophisticated and understated. It's certainly not our traditional um, power amplifiers and preamplifiers that we're used to seeing where they make a statement. This is designed to basically fit in the house and disappear almost. Uh, it's there, but it's not there. Anybody looking at it will know that it's a very elegant piece, but it doesn't necessarily shout out and say, look, I'm worth tens of thousands of dollars. So anyway, that's what the face looks like. The switches are um, uh, stop uh, knobs, so you click through the different inputs. Uh, you have three RCA analog inputs, and then you have a digi uh, digital inputs because it's got a DAC. Well, the, the chip that they're using also will do the decoding, the DAC section. And so it, it has coax, USB, uh, Wi-Fi, and um, uh, Bluetooth. So quite full function. Um, Mark Levinson uh, really likes uh, for a user to just connect um, a streamer or a MacBook. He really likes Apple because he, uh, as he says, most of the music that you and I hear in the digital realm uh, was produced on Mac. So uh, why not use Mac? So anyway, that's, um, that's what the connectivity is like. This is what the back looks like. Uh, over here, you've got the um, digital RCA connection. Um, you've got, uh, what is this? Oh, this is a section that says DSP, so I assume, let me just pull it up. Yeah, so that's a USB connection. I assume that that's uh, for um, uh, updating uh, and also for tuning of the amplifier to the system. We haven't yet uh, done training with uh, Daniel Hertz yet, so once we do that, I'll, I'll go into more details about how it works. Of course, you have the USB connection, and then these are your RCA inputs. I really like this little touch. Uh, Mark makes a point to, to say and caution that the inputs that are not being used, you should always have these um, connectors uh, um, connectors uh, in the RCA uh, jack so it, that it minimizes any noise. So that goes in there. Very simple connections. And then, of course, over here are your binding posts. Now, what's interesting about the binding post is that it's basically two slabs of metal being forced onto the wire that you use. So it, it, the, the space is large enough for a spade or bare wire. I'll show you, or, or uh, Mike will uh, show you the actual speaker wire that comes with the Maria amplifier. But Mark Levinson includes wires that he uh, believes will give you the optimum performance. They're quite small. They're probably about uh, uh, 16 or 18 gauge. Um, it doesn't look like it's anything special. It, it is um, on the jacket itself. It does say Daniel Hertz. Uh, reminds me of almost like Litz wiring. Anyway, but what's also very cool is that you've got this little tool and it has the Daniel Hertz logo on the top. It just sits in this little recess here. And if you look at the inside, it looks like basically um, a slot head screwdriver. And all you do is you put this in here and you can tighten up the binding post. So very cool thing to do. Although, um, most of the time, you should be able to get a pretty good grip just by uh, turning it yourself. And over here, of course, is your power. So very, very simple use uh, uh, product in terms of its functionality and connectivity. Now let's go, ah, I should talk about the price. Uh, it's 12,000 euro or 17,750 Canadian. So again, not cheap and not meant to be necessarily cheap because it is um, for all the decades that Mark Levinson has been in our industry, um, he believes that this is one of his finest products that um, they've ever come, come, uh, uh, come up with. So uh, anyway, looking forward to listening to that. Let's start with the uh, baby speakers. This is called the Daniel Hertz EVA, or EVA, E-V-A. Um, it's a simple two-way, at least from the outside, one-inch silk dome and a six-and-a-half-inch woofer. He doesn't talk very much about the technology or the crossover and so on. Um, what I can tell you is that it's rated from 35 hertz to 20 kilohertz, which is insane. I, I, I've never seen a bookshelf that's rated that low. 
uh, sensitivity is 89 dB and it's an 8 ohm load so it should be quite easy for any typical amplifier to drive. Um, uh, the speaker's price uh, is 7,000 euro or 10,350 Canadian. These are the optional plexiglass stands. Uh, Mark uh, makes a point to, to say that it is art grade plexiglass. So presumably there's different grades of plexiglass. It is beautifully finished and polished. When we got it, we couldn't believe how beautiful it is. And it's very, very heavy. So you assemble it uh, with the screws that you're provided with. And then at the bottom of the speaker, there are also holes that you can attach to the stand so it's very stable. Um, uh, altogether, once it's assembled, it's not going anywhere. The base is wide enough that, again, it's got a lot of stability. And also very subtly, uh, embossed or engraved into a corner of the stand at the bottom is uh, are the words Daniel Hertz with the logo. So, and then the grills are magnetically adhered, just like that. There it is. And the I already gave you the price. This is called the Amber. Now, uh, the, the oh, uh, one more thing. The Ava only comes in black piano. The amber comes in uh, maple as well as walnut. This is the maple finish. I happen to like the light wood finish and it's really beautiful the way that it's done. The front surface, the top and the back are finished in black piano. Yep. And then the sides are veneered maple and then it's highly lacquered. So it's got this beautiful deep shine. It's a 10 inch woofer with, uh, it's a dual concentric with a one inch tweeter inside. Again, he doesn't give very much te technical specifications other than um, specified from 28 to over, uh, over 20,000 cycles, 8 ohm load, and the speaker weighs 57.3 pounds, 92 dB sensitivity. So again, pretty easy to drive. What else can I tell you? Um, the binding posts on the back are similar to this, except they're more chunky. So uh, that's basically it. Um, when I do a follow-up video uh, of the review, I'll go into more details about Mark Levinson, the man himself, the different, his history, and so on. What I will say before I finish this video, um, I was thinking about my relationship with Mark and how kind of interesting it is. Ever since the beginning when I was first aware of Mark Levinson, one of the things, one of the themes that kept popping up was that he is a man that refuses to go with convention. Back in the late 60s, early 70s, when he first introduced his uh, first product, um, people were saying there's no way anybody's going to spend that much money on that product. Well, they were wrong because that was the start of Mark Levinson, the company, and it became uh, eventually into this juggernaut of a success. Uh, then subsequently, when he started Cello, people said that's ridiculous, nobody's going to spend that much money on electronics, and they were wrong. In fact, the very first product he came up with when he started cello was the palette, which is basically an equalizer. Now this is ironic because um, he was one of the first people who, to, who, to, to say don't use EQs, don't use tone controls because they color the sound too much. Well, ironically enough, when he started cello, the very first product was the palette, which is a equalizer, a, a very, very high-end, extremely transparent EQ, but nonetheless the EQ. So again, he breaks convention. Um, with Red Rose, not so much. Um, uh, his speakers did use ribbons and things like this, but they were in many ways more conventional. Um, and then with Daniel Hertz, especially with the Maria speaker uh, electronics, um, he has broken convention again by by taking class D, in his opinion, as far as state of uh, state of the art allows it to be done, with the addition of his uh, of his own technology that has come from many years of research and development. Um, so certainly, while Mark Levinson may or may not be the chief engineer, he certainly is the visionary behind all these different companies, and one of his talents was being able to get together. Uh, great designers like John Curl, uh, Dick Berwin, and so on. People who had knowledge that maybe he didn't, but were able to get him the results that he was looking for. And the other thing that's also interesting about Mark is that uh, oftentimes uh, he would have um, a split, if you will, with his uh, 
financing people, his uh, partners and so on, because he had a very specific idea and vision about what he wanted to achieve, and other people may not agree, and then unfortunately they would split. Um, so not unlike somebody like uh, Steve Jobs, although certainly maybe not to the level that Steve Jobs is, but in the sense of his determination, his obstinacy, uh, his refusal to uh, um, compromise, his vision, in that sense they are quite similar. And I love the fact that his products, at least to my eyes, are very, very elegant. I would have no issues uh, having these products at home. What do you think, Mike? Would you also? Gorgeous. Yeah. So, and, and so far, everybody who's seen the products feel the same way. Anyway, um, thanks for watching this. Uh, as I said, I've, I've saved you, I've spared you the actual unboxing process itself, but there's one coming up. <laughs> so you're not entirely spared. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, please uh, give your comments below if you have any uh, thoughts, if you've heard Daniel Hurd's, if you've heard his early products like Cello, Red Rose, and so on. I'd love to see your comments. We'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.